On Monday, it will be exactly a year since 1,200 innocent Israelis and others were murdered by Hamas terrorists. It will also mark the first anniversary since 251 Israelis, men, women and children and others were snatched from their homes or the Nova Music Festival. Many of those abducted were never to be seen alive again. A year on and there are still some 97 hostages. Let me say that again. 97 hostages hidden across Gaza. But the IDF estimates at least a third of them are dead. And I hate having to say that because I'm about to introduce my next guest. One of those still trapped in Gaza is Alon Hell. The 22-year-old was taken in the early hours from the Nova Music Festival and he has not been seen since. I'm joined now by his mother, Idit, who has been, well, battling to bring him home and then some, I'm sure. Um, welcome to the show. I'm so, so sorry for everything that you are going through. I'd love to know, first of all, how you are. Well, uh, it's a difficult time. Uh, you know, as time passes, it's not, uh, it's not getting any easier. We are really uh, thinking about Alon and uh, hoping that he's uh, coping wherever he is. Um, it's been very difficult for us this past uh, almost a year. Mums are incredible in so many ways, but we have this this intuition. I know I'm a mum as well. You believe he's alive, don't you? Yeah, of course. I can feel it. You know, it's something that, it's, as you said, it's an intuition. I know he's alive. I know this. And I feel it in my bones. And, uh, and that helps me, you know, I'm being in faith and, and thinking about him all the time. I don't stop for a second. I'm doing everything I can to bring him home, advocating in every place in every way I can, making sure that everybody knows about him, about alone, who he is, that he is not just a number. Before you just said 97, you know, people, which is like, I know of 101, but I'm thinking it's a number. They are not a number. Each one has a family. Each one has... I know a dream of what they want to be and do in their lives. So we have to know this. We have to uh, be minded of that, everyone. No, I agree you entirely. And, and what you're doing now by speaking to us here is, is you are putting faces and people to those numbers and it's incredibly brave. Um, I hope it's not too painful for you, but can you explain the moment that you found out that he'd been taken? Uh, yeah, um, it was after, well, at the 7th of October in the morning, uh, we called him. I knew that he was in the Nova Festival, so I called him to see if he was okay, where he was, and I sent him a message, and he said that he was um, at a bomb shelter and that he was okay, and right after that, I said, to send a picture that I'll know that you are okay. And that was the last time he uh, wrote to us on WhatsApp. Um, and then we tried calling him for hours and hours and hours. And about around like two o'clock in the afternoon, this person, uh, this uh, guy answers Alon's phone and says that he's in Soroka Hospital. And he brought uh, the sevens who survived that bomb shelter. There were 27 people at that bomb shelter. Four were kidnapped. Um, seven survived, and all the other were murdered. So I was thinking, okay, you know, my husband went to uh, Soroka Hospital. He drove all the way, and when he came back from Soroka Hospital, he told me that alone was uh, kidnapped alive. It was very hard for me to um, to hear that. But at that moment, I just closed my eyes. I took a couple of breaths and I said, okay, so we're gonna fight and we're gonna make sure that he comes back. And from that moment, you know, what I'm, I know that I have no control over what they're doing to alone, but I do have control over how I react to what happened and how I, what I do, you know, how I, I act. And, and for me, that is, that is something that we've been doing. What I, how I see it is, I want to know that alone, like I'm thinking, what, what kind of home alone is going to come back to? 
not just our physical home, but you know, this the land of Israel and also in the world. What kind, to what world he's going to come after he, you know, after all of this? And, and I'm trying my best to make sure that we are united. That we're doing things for um, for each other, and we're we're there for each other. You know, the like the yellow piano that we've been uh, uh, doing all over the world. Alone's yellow piano is about that, you know. It's about not just learning about alone and knowing what he, who he is as a person, but and that he's a pianist. But also, it's on the yellow piano. It says, "You are not alone," mm -hmm. and it's not just that alone is not alone, and that we are as Israelis not alone, and we're together. It's you are not alone in this world. No one is alone in this world. So when something happens to your community, if something happens to your friends, if something happens, you have to be there for each other because we don't live alone. We have to be united and be there. So that, that is the meaning of you are not alone. So we have to continue and if there's a hardship, if somebody's feeling you know, bad, we as, you have to be for each other. You know, yeah. That, that, that community is about, that's what, a, society is about. You are incredible. Uh, before we go, uh, I want to ask you one more question. Do you speak to him in your head ever? Do you, do you say things to him? Do you try and tell him to be strong in your head? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every minute, every minute. I, I, I like when I do something, when I'm, you know, uh, in the kitchen and then washing, you know, the dishes or whatever. If I'm doing something, I'm thinking about him and I'm sending him love. That picture that you just sent was the, is the, my first hug with him after five months that I haven't seen him when he was in the um, you know, traveling all over Asia and we came to Bangkok. He came from India and we came from Israel. And this hug that you just showed me hugging him was just after five months that I didn't see him. And I really want this hug again. And and I, and I talk to him, yeah, I, I, I say to him things that are very uh, power empowering, uh, telling him that he's strong and that he can do this and that he has to hold on and we're doing everything we can to bring him home, and that he's loved and not just by me, by all mothers who knows and, and knows about him. I think as a mother, you know, there's so much hardship and there's so much you know, political things going on. And, and at the end of it, we are human beings. And at the end of it, we're all mothers. And every mother in this world has to put herself in my position and see if this is right. Alone is an innocent civilian that was taken from Israeli land. He did nothing. He went to a peace festival, the Nova festival. And he didn't want this. And he loves, you know, he's a wonderful person. He loves people. He doesn't care about, you know, what religion you are, yeah. where you're from. He cares about you as a person. And for me, as a mother, you know, every mother wants to save their child. So, yeah, look, he is, think about that. He is so lucky to have you. Uh, we've run out of time, but your courage is immense. And as I said, again, he is so blessed to have you fighting for him. And we send all our love from Australia. We're thinking of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.